first steps. Your first shader. You now have two distinct options. You can download all the shaders in the course by opening the side panel and clicking on the resources file unity underscore shaders dot zip. Or you could download or clone the resources from this GitHub address. Unzip the resources to a folder of your choice. The resources includes two Unity projects, Shaders Complete and Shaders Learn. Shaders Complete has the final finished version of each example that we're going to work through in the course, whereas Shaders Learn has the starting template for each example and to complete each step you must enter the code I describe in the course. You can take your pick about how to approach the course. If you're an experienced Unity developer, then you might be happy just to let me talk through the code. If you're inexperienced, then you will definitely benefit from following each step in the course and entering the code yourself. From now on, I will assume you're looking at the Shaders Learn project. Start by creating a new scene by clicking File, New Scene. The project already has a Scenes folder in the Assets folder. Save your scene to this folder with the name Shaders-1. Now, add a quad. Right-click in the Hierarchy window and choose 3D Object Quad. For the first part of the course, we're going to focus on applying our shaders to a single quad object and view the result with an orthographic camera. Don't worry, by the end we'll be creating shaders for the 3D world and applying them to a game environment. But the phrase running before you can walk applies to learning shaders and having taught shaders to lots of students I found that a step-by-step -step approach works much better than suddenly starting with a shader that supports sophisticated lighting, shadows, fog and specularity. We'll get there but not before you're confident applying a shader to a single quad. Select the main camera and choose the camera component. Switch the drop down from perspective to orthographic. Where size says 5, change this to 1. Make sure the camera is at 0, 0, minus 1 and the quad is positioned at 0, 0, 0 and scaled to 4, 4, 4. If you switch to the game view, the quad should fill the screen. Now, in the Material folder, select Create Material and name it Material 1. Drag the material onto the quad to set the quad to use Material 1. Materials in Unity are where we can place our shaders. Now switch to the Shader folder. Right click and choose Create Shader Unlit Shader. Call it Shader 1 Unlit. A bare bones shader is created. Double click it to open it in Visual Studio. Even though this is a bare bones shader, it is still too complicated for our purposes. We're going to strip it right back. First, in the shader line, Unity has a great way of putting shaders into folders. For this course, they're all in the folder named Nix Shaders. You might choose to place them in another folder. I chose the name Nick Shaders forward slash shader1 unlit. When we select the shader for a material, we will expand Nick Shaders and find the shader1 unlit entry. The name is usually the same as the file name, but this is not essential. The important name, the name you'll find when applying it to a material, is the name you use in the shader line. Next, delete the main text entry in the Properties section. We're not ready for textures yet. Remove the Fog Pragma and delete the App Data struct. Delete the V2F struct. Replace Pragma Vertex Vert with Pragma Vertex Vert underscore Image. Remove the Sampler 2D and Float 4 variables. Remove the Vert function. Finally, in the Frag function, Replace V2F with V2F underscore image and the code with return fix for 1001. You should have an empty properties section, then a subshader section. The subshader section should begin with tags, render type equals opaque, 
LOD100. We'll find out more about render types later in the course and LOD100 is the simplest level of detail option for Unity standard types. It means we're not concerned about lighting. Then we have a pass, just like the properties and sub shader sections. The pass section is contained in curly braces. Then you'll see in caps, CG program. From now until the end CG line, the code is CG code. You have two pragma statements, vertex vert underscore image and fragment frag, an include line and a frag function. The most important thing to take away from this video is the way the code is divided into the vertex shader and the fragment shader. The name of the vertex shader function comes after the word vertex in the pragma line and ditto for the fragment shader. This follows the word fragment in the pragma line. A function is simply a block of code that can easily be called and may or may not return a value. You can see the frag function. It is the section of code that starts fix for frag. But where's the vertex shader? There is no vert underscore image function. Actually there is. It's contained in the unity cg dot cg inc file. It looks like this. We'll review what this is doing in a later video. Suffice to say that it is essential for our purposes. But for now we will concentrate on the frag function. A fragment shader is responsible for setting the colour of each pixel. A vertex shader handles the positioning of the vertices and any other vertex specific details such as texture coordinates. Notice that the function sets values in a v2f underscore im struct and returns this struct. This data is passed internally to the fragment shader. In this shader we don't use the data, we simply return a vector value of 1001. This frag function will be called for every pixel of the game view, since the quad that has the shader applied fills the screen. The fix4 value that is returned from the function will be the colour for each pixel. By controlling this colour we could create all manner of shaders. This one is the simplest possible. It returns the same colour wherever on the quad the pixel is. The fix4 type sets the value between 0 and 1 for the red, green, blue and alpha channels in that order. Here we set red and alpha to 1 and green and blue to zero. Now switch back to Unity and check that the shader is compiled correctly. Unity shows any errors in the code and by double clicking them you return to Visual Studio, able to sort out the error. Assuming there are no errors it only remains to set the shader for Material 1 to Shader 1 Unlit. Now you have a red screen. Big deal you might think, but let's take baby steps. In this video we looked at creating a framework for exploring some simple unlit shaders. We created a scene with an orthographic camera and a single quad that fills the screen. We created a material and shader and edited the shader to be a very simple one. We applied our material to the quad and set the shader for the material to the one we created. You've taken your first step towards being a shader expert. I hope it wasn't too painful. What are the most important things to take away from this video? One, you need a vertex shader and a fragment shader. Two, the fragment shader function must return the color of the pixel it is currently working on as a four component vector, an RGBA value. In the example, we return a fixed four value. Three, each channel of an RGBA format color takes a value between 0 and 1. This video comes from my Unity Shader course. Get the full course for a great discount by following this link. See the description for a link to the resources.